Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Justin Moan? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the alleged crime, then offer my analysis. Justin Moan was born on November 4, 1991, and lived in Levittown, Pennsylvania. This is about 30 minutes northeast of Philadelphia. He was raised by his parents, Michael and Denise. He had an older sister who was born in 1986 and an older brother who was born in 1989. In 2010, Justin graduated from high school. His accomplishments there included being nominated as the runner-up for Class Clown. After high school, Justin attended Penn State University. In 2014, he graduated with a bachelor's degree in agribusiness management. In 2015, Justin moved to Colorado. He worked for a credit union in Colorado Springs before finding a better paying job with Progressive Insurance in October of 2016. In August of 2017, he was fired from that company after allegedly kicking open a door. Justin moved back to Pennsylvania and lived with his parents in their house on Upper Orchard Drive in Levittown. He worked for a company in Philadelphia. In 2023, that company called the police looking for advice on how to fire Justin because they were concerned about his behavior and about his writings. Now moving to the timeline of the alleged crime. On January 29, 2024, Justin purchased a Sig Sauer 9mm semi-automatic pistol. He had to surrender his medical marijuana card in order to legally complete this transaction. On the next day, January 30, at 6.59 p.m., the police responded to the Moan family residence after receiving a call from Justin's mother, Denise. She had found the body of Justin's father, Michael, in a bathroom on the first floor. When the police arrived at the scene, they discovered that Michael had been decapitated. An autopsy would later reveal that the cause of death was being shot in the head one time. A machete and a large kitchen knife were found in the bathtub not far from Michael's body. A cooking pot was found inside of a bedroom next to the bathroom. It contained Michael's head. In a different first floor bedroom, the police found rubber gloves that had what appeared to be blood on them. The police spoke to Denise. She told them that she left the house at about 2 p.m. At that time, the only people in the house were Michael and Justin. When she arrived home, she found that Michael's Toyota Corolla was missing, the front door was unlocked, and her son Justin was not there. Investigators became aware that Justin had posted a video on YouTube at about 5 p.m. The video was titled, Moan's Militia, Call to Arms for American Patriots, it was 14 minutes and 35 seconds. In the video, Justin spoke directly to the camera about his father. At one point, Justin picked up Michael's head and displayed it in front of the camera. He said, quote, This is the head of Mike Moen, a federal employee of over 20 years, and my father. He is now in hell for eternity as a traitor to his country, unquote. Justin can be seen wearing rubber gloves, which matched the rubber gloves found in the house. The police were interested in finding Justin, mostly because of the murder part. Fortunately, it did not take long for Justin to be located. He drove his father's Toyota Corolla to Fort Indian Town Gap, Pennsylvania. This is about two hours west of Levittown. Justin drove through barricades at a Pennsylvania National Guard training center, exited the vehicle, and climbed a barbed wire fence. The police were able to find Justin by tracking his cell phone. At 9.25 p.m., he was arrested without incident. At the time of his arrest, Justin was carrying a 9mm pistol that appeared to be missing one cartridge. Justin Moan was charged with first-degree murder, abusing a corpse, and possession of instruments of crime. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, Justin had a history of filing lawsuits that were frivolous, bizarre, and revealed anti-government sentiment. He sued the federal government three times, complaining that they, quote, 
negligently and fraudulently induced him to borrow money to pay for his education without sufficiently warning him of the possibility that he would face a difficult job market and could be unable to pay back his loan, unquote. In 2017, Justin sued Progressive Insurance. He claimed that he was discriminated against for being male, overeducated, overqualified, and intelligent. The lawsuit was dismissed after a judge found no evidence of discrimination. It sounds like Justin wanted to blame everyone else for his perceived failures. Item number two, Justin Moan did not have a history of mental illness. When Justin was in high school, his classmates described him as immature, but said that eventually he became overconfident. In college, Justin started talking about bizarre conspiracy theories, including those involving the government. In his neighborhood, Justin wasn't exactly popular. He was described as someone who would walk around the development and behave in an odd manner. For example, sometimes he would sit on a manhole cover in a park and stare at a house. Despite perceiving him as unusual, no one believed that Justin was dangerous. Item number three, Justin listed self-published books for sale on Amazon. One book titled The Revolution Leader's Survival Guide featured the world on the brink of a golden age of world peace and space colonization or a second dark age. Justin had a book that was loosely based on his life titled The Second Messiah, King of Earth. A book titled The Kingdom of Darkness talked about how Satan was planning on taking over the universe using technology. This book was set in the 2040s after human beings colonized other planets. In Justin's book titled America's Coming Bloody Revolution, he demanded that Americans kill their own family members, bosses, elected leaders, judges, co-workers, and teachers. He argued that people born in 1991, the same year that he was born, or born after that, should carry out this bloody revolution. In addition to advocating for homicide, Justin was ageist. Some of Justin's other book titles were The Punishing, Dark Ages of the Future, Poems I Wrote While Stoned, and They Will Burn This Book. In his Amazon profile, Justin wrote, quote, His life story is unbelievable, and there may not be enough words to describe him, but one may begin to understand his complexity and experiences through his art. He only wishes to bring positive changes to the world, unquote. Justin wasn't only someone who wrote what he referred to as books, he also wrote what he referred to as music. On Spotify, he uploaded multiple albums containing music with apocalyptic themes. There were five regular listeners to his music. This is probably less success than he envisioned, but certainly more than he deserved. Item number four, in the video that Justin uploaded to YouTube on the day of the killing, he once again encouraged violence against government officials. He claimed that he was the commander of a national militia network and ordered militia members to attack and kill government employees. He even revealed the home address of a federal judge and placed a bounty on several high-ranking federal officials. Justin criticized President Joe Biden, the LGBT community, and the Black Lives Matter movement. Now moving to item number five. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Justin Moan appeared to be paranoid and embraced conspiracy theories. A central component of his belief system was his anti-government position. He saw the government as a threat to freedom and safety. In addition to being paranoid, Justin had several narcissistic characteristics, including self-centeredness, a sense of entitlement, arrogance, overconfidence, a belief that he was special, and grandiosity. In his mind, he was the most important person who ever lived. Justin's experiences in life did not match his inflated self-view. For example, he failed to maintain steady employment and had to settle for runner-up to class clown in high school. These failures created a conflict that Justin could not resolve because he refused to believe that he was the problem. Not surprisingly, this led Justin to view the rest of the world as evil, corrupt, and out to get him. Every struggle that he had was because others would not recognize his greatness and respect him. His next step was a bold move to validate his feelings of self-worth. On January 30, 2024, he launched his revolution by mobilizing his non-existent militia. His father, Michael, had retired from his job as a federal employee with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. 
so naturally Justin looked at Michael as an enemy. Killing his father demonstrated that Justin was ready to follow his own advice. It proved his high level of commitment. There was no turning back. He was ready for the apocalypse. After allegedly committing the murder, Justin drove to the National Guard Training Center to continue his attack. The Bucks County District Attorney claimed that Justin was acting with a clear mind when he allegedly killed his father, but I'm not sure this statement is accurate. Justin may have been suffering from paranoid delusions at the time of the killing. I would not be surprised if his defense prominently featured the argument that he was psychotic. Considering he uploaded a video featuring his father's head, Justin is facing an uphill legal battle. It's not like he can argue that he found his father in that condition and just decided to make a video. Some type of defense based on insanity is the only hope Justin has of escaping responsibility. Justin would have a better chance of selling one of his so-called books than being successful with this tactic, but he did manifest symptoms of paranoia for many years before the killing. He was heavily invested in conspiracy theories for a long time. This, combined with the bizarre nature of his crime, may give him a chance of spending his life in a mental health facility as opposed to spending his life in prison. Now moving to my final thoughts. Conspiratorial thinking is extremely common all over the world. It is an epidemic that doesn't have a clear solution. The content of most conspiracy theories involves some type of threat to humanity. A person with these beliefs may try to run and hide from the threat, or they may take an approach based on offense, like they want to strike first in order to protect themselves from the government. Conspiratorial beliefs are amplified and transformed through the lens of narcissism. In the case of Justin Moen, he was enamored with his own perceived greatness. Therefore, when he invested in conspiracy theories, he envisioned himself as a hero. He was the second messiah and the king of earth. His intent was to save humanity from the evil forces of the government. The higher purpose in his life was now being fulfilled. He was finally going to ascend to the throne. This case demonstrates how personality traits can combine to become particularly dangerous. Justin probably wasn't a threat just based on his conspiratorial thinking and paranoia. Similarly, he probably wasn't a threat based only on his narcissistic characteristics. However, when all these traits combined, it led to a perfect storm. Justin believed he could satisfy his paranoia and his need for greatness by rising up as a leader. A little bit of narcissism can be useful in certain circumstances. For example, it can help people to overcome inappropriate criticism, stand up for themselves, and be more competitive in various environments. A large amount of narcissism, however, is rarely useful. It can transform any personality trait, whether adaptive or maladaptive, into something undesirable. In extreme cases, it can even lead to unthinkable crimes. Those are my thoughts on the case of Justin Moan. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.